ยอดรงซอยจงปุยมาชัวซุนซุตุกูยอดริชาวาลูวาลูเปลินตุนติโกชาชองอเซโกจีญอดงดงเซนโพเซเมนโซตาอเมริกาตัวแอมบาสซา
and the hybrid power will will continue for several years, although somewhat controversial. We can talk a little bit about about that if you're interested. Uh, but it's pro probably not a, a good strategy for a long-term economic growth. Uh, the areas that I look at for more long-term economic growth are uh, manufacturing, tourism, and agricultural processing. And I think actually Minnesota could play a, a role in, in the latter, in, in the agricultural processing area. The, uh, the roads in Laos are, are improving markedly. Uh, I visited uh, several months ago a new special economic zone in Savannah Ket, which is in the middle part of, of Laos, and sits on the Mekong River across the uh, river from Thailand. And because of the roads are getting better, it's only about a nine hour drive from Savannah Ket to Da Nang in Vietnam, which is an international port, which offers uh, great opportunities for economic development. This is the east-west corridor that uh, economists have been talking about for a number of years. And we've seen some major investment in Savannah Cat, especially in a special economic zone there. Toyota just opened up a factory uh, manufacturing uh, automobile seats for cars that are going to be assembled in Thailand. Nikon is there with an assembly operation, wants to bring its, more of its supply chain there. There's a French optical lens company, there's a Dutch company that makes uh, parts for seats for Boeing and Airbus, and so on and so forth. Uh, so Savannah Kent has actually been growing at a, at a rate of about 11% per year, uh, which I, I think if you do the math, means that they could double their GDP in, in something like six years. So the cities in, in, uh, in Laos are becoming uh, more prosperous, but the rural areas are still very poor. And uh, I took a trip uh, up some of the northern provinces recently, to, uh, Luang Pabang, Udom Sai, Luang Nam Ta, Bokeo, and uh, visited some uh, projects that we support, uh, school meals projects, uh, mother and child, uh, health projects, and uh, some of these remote villages are very, very poor. We, um, in one village we stopped, there was what they call temporary dormitories for students because the students lived in other villages that were so far from the village where, that there was, where there was a school that they needed to stay at the school, at least during the school days. And in, in this one particular village, they had a building made out of bamboo and, and uh, of a, a thatched roof, which of course leaked when it rained. And it was about the size of this open area where we are, and had two long benches in it. And in there, 60 girls stayed uh, during the, the school week. So that this is the level of development in the, in the rural areas. It, it's a, also a very young country. So 70% of the population is under age 30, 50% is under age 20. So that, that, what that means is in terms of uh, their experience of the war is that so you have 70% of the population were born 10 years after the war ended, and you have 70% of the population who look at the world in a very different way than the 79-year-olds who are running the government. So that's, there's a, there's a tension there. A uh, few words on bilateral relations between the U.S. and Laos. So overall, it's in the United States' interest to ensure that Laos does not become overly dependent on any single country for its economic growth and is able to act independently and in its own interest on political matters. Uh, so to achieve that goal, we are trying to position the United States as a trusted and reliable partner and as an option to other 
powerful countries who are trying to exert their influence in Laos. So we are, to achieve that goal, we're, we're trying to build a new relationship for the 21st century while we continue to address the legacies of the 20th. So the legacies of the 20th century include our ongoing search for U.S. personnel missing in action in Laos <clears throat> during the secret war. So there were a total of 525 U.S. personnel uh, missing in action, and there are 305 who remain missing. Uh, so we are continuing uh, to account for those uh, personnel, and we're grateful for the cooperation of the government of Laos in that effort. We're also continuing to uh, address the problem of an unexploded ordinance uh, from the war, which until recently were claiming over 300 casualties per year, uh, mainly from young children finding the uh, anti-personnel weapons and playing with them as toys and as a result either being killed or losing their parts of their uh, arms or legs. Uh, those casualties have been reduced to uh, around 40 or 50 a year, which is still, of course, 40 or 50 too many. So in recent years, we've increased our funding uh, for UXO clearance and for uh, victims' assistance and for risk education, first from 5 million to 9 million per year, and then from 9 million to 12 million per year. And I think this year we'll probably increase it to uh, 13 million once we get through our uh, very complicated budget process. In building a new relationship for the 21st century, we're, we're working with the government of Laos in a number of areas. One is uh, education, where we have a school meals program, which is funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which provides a small snack uh, made out of a corn soy mixture uh, together with bananas or uh, vegetables from the village to give it a little more flavor, uh, which provides an incentive for young children to come to school uh, because the, the children are coming from such <coughs> poor families that they would not have anything to eat all day long if they came to school. And if, I don't know about you, but if I was a young child and I wasn't going to get anything to eat all day, I don't think I'd be going to school, and they weren't. And uh, with the introduction of this program, the attendance rates have gone up from like 65% to 97%, and in one village, the leaders told us even that uh, there were young children lying about their age so they could <coughs> get into school to get the snack. Uh, <clears throat> that's a good program. We're about to start a new program run by USAID to uh, address the very serious problem of child malnutrition. Laos has one of the highest levels of child stunting in the world. The, 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 uh, the stunting rate nationwide is 44%. In, in the remote <coughs> provinces, it's over 60%. Uh, it's, a, it's a complicated issue that involves not just food security, but water and sanitation, and uh, cultural practices and, and other other issues that need to be addressed. Uh, we're working um, with the government on the environment, particularly on the hydropower issue and mitigating the downstream impacts of the dams that the government is constructing, which have become very controversial, especially in the downstream countries in, in Cambodia and, and Vietnam. So we have experts from Army Corps of Engineers, from the uh, U.S. Department of Interior, from the Department of Energy, who are uh, working with the government on areas like uh, sedimentation and fisheries and dam safety and operation. The Defense Department is building schools and hospitals in remote areas, uh, often the same areas where we're conducting uh, searches for U.S. personnel missing in action. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control is working with the Ministry of Health in 
and trying to control diseases like malaria, uh, influenza, and <coughs> HIV. And the Minister of Health uh, came to the United States and visited this past September and uh, went to Atlanta and met with Dr. Frieden, the director of the Centers for Disease Control, and to the um, Washington, met with the Secretary of Health and Human Services, went to the Pentagon and met with Defense Department people uh, working on health issues, uh, which I think was an important visit. Um, the Minister of Health is a man named Dr. Exavan Vongvichit, who is the stepson of the second president of the Lao PDR, uh, lived in the caves in Vieng Tsai and is married to a woman who was born in the caves and when they visited the Pentagon, they said they were a little bit af afraid to go to the Pentagon. And they, when they went there, they realized this is just a big office building with lots of people working in it. And so th these kind of visits uh, really helped to, uh, to uh, create people-to-people -people ties and increase understanding. Uh, just this past February, the United States and the, and the uh, Government of Laos hosted a conference in the city of Paxe in, in the s s southern Laos to, to uh, with the, the other countries in the lower Mekong, uh, Thailand and Cambodia, Vietnam and Burma, and with other donors to talk about the, the, the challenges that are accompanying development in the lower Mekong region, including uh, the development of hydropower. And <clears throat> while we're doing that, we're of course continuing to uh, monitor the human rights, and religious freedom, and labor conditions. Uh, we publish annual reports to the Congress on these topics, and we speak out uh, when there are human, human rights violations, including in the the, the case two years ago of the NGO activist uh, Sambat Sampong. Uh, and we were working with the, with the government to build the, the legal institutions, the courts and the prosecutors and the, and the, um, the police to develop the judicial system so that it can operate in a way to, so that Laos can meet its self-professed goal of becoming a rule of law state by 2020 and have a system that can pr provide due process of law. law. Um, <clears throat> a few words about the role of the La Lao American community and, and the Hmong American community in the uh, social and econ economic development of, of Laos. Laos is still classified as a least developed country, which is in the category of the UN and the multilateral development banks is the, the poorest uh, category of countries in the world. It, it has a goal of graduating from least developed uh, country status by 2020, uh, which actually means it will lose a few benefits associated with being categorized as a least developed country, but it does want to progress. Uh, and, but one of the great uh, assets, I think, that it, it could have in that effort, which for, I think for the most part is untapped, is the Lao American community, the Hmong American community, could really contribute to the social and economic development of, of the country. Um, and it's, it's a large community, and compared to the size of the country. Laos is a small country, about six million people, and there's 600,000 Lao Americans here, so one-tenth one of the population of Laos, and of course, if you don't count all the Lao that actually live in Thailand, um, is here in the, in, in the United States. Uh, Secretary of State Clinton uh, gave a speech back a couple years ago at the second annual Global Diaspora Forum and, and talked about the role of communities like yours um, 
It's a very interesting speech, but I won't bore you with the whole thing. Let me just read one paragraph of it. She said, diaspora communities have an enormous potential to help solve problems and create opportunities in their countries of origin because we believe that, as the title of this conference says, we can move forward by giving back, by tapping into the experiences, the energy, the expertise of diaspora communities, we can reverse the so-called brain drain that slows progress in so many countries around the world and instead offer the benefits of the brain gain. Um, so I do think that you have so much to offer uh, Laos, and I think Laos is, the government of Laos is, is at a point uh, where they would welcome that system. And I know that many of you are already playing such roles uh, in Laos, uh, but I encourage more of you to become involved in this way. You have uh, so very much to contribute, uh, both to Laos and to the United States, as you're doing here uh, in uh, St. Paul and Minneapolis. So, Kop Jai, Hua Jiao, thank you very much, and uh, be glad to answer any questions you might have. ตัวเชียนเป็นเช่นมงตัวตัวกองลูกคนเชียนนอเทียตอนนองจอนดอลลาร์ลูกปงเชียตอนเป็นเช่นมงยัดดูเทียตลาดจัวเทียตอนยั
they've talked to the U.S. Embassy, they've talked to in Laos and the consular officers and the um, consular chief who are all aware of this issue, but there has been no response to um, our request is for the embassy to work more with um, with concerned U.S. citizens on this. Well, thank you, and that that is a problem that we're very 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 much aware of, and it's a, it's a problem that we spend a great deal of time on. Um, we we deal with it uh, from the from the angle of uh, consular fraud. So many of the cases that that you're talking about involve fraud, either in the uh, well. Let me let me explain from a consular point of view what's involved. Uh, so we have a type of visa which is called a fiance visa. It's a K-1 visa, and so if if someone is uh, if an American citizen becomes engaged to a citizen of another country they can apply for a visa for the citizen of the other country to come to the United States so that the two can become married. And that's a fiancé visa. It's a, uh, a visa that we give around the world. The, the problem that we see in, in many cases from the Hmong American community is two kinds. One is the uh, the American uh, misrepresenting uh, his marital status. So in many of these cases, the American citizen is actually already married and already has a family, which would make him ineligible to get a fiancé visa for, for the, the, the young woman in, in Laos. Uh, so that's an angle that, that we investigate. The other uh, area of fraud involves the age of the, uh, the Lao citizen, of the, the Hmong young woman or girl in many cases. And there's a minimum age, and I'm sorry, I don't know what it is since I, I don't work in the consular section anymore, but let's say, let's say it's 18 years of age. In applying for the visa, the applicants know what the minimum age is, and they, they say the young woman is actually that age. Often, the young woman is nowhere near that age, and, the, 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 and is often 13 years old, something like that. Um, so that those those cases take a lot of invest, investigation time, and we actually have a full time. Uh, ex-police officer who's a fraud investigator who looks into these cases and of course we have Hmong speakers in the consular section and uh, we travel to the provinces to look into these cases. We go to the villages where the young women are from and we talk to the village chiefs and we look at the records and uh, we deny uh, as many of these cases as we can. So that's kind of our part issue and what we can do is is uh, deny visas to men who are already married and deny visas to <coughs> young girls who are too young ตะกันลูกคงเชิงวัตถุอเมริกาอัมเบสซาเดอร์ประชาชนเชื่อเกี่ยวติดอเมริกามุชเชื่อติดอเมริกาเนี่ยตัวที่เราช่วยเดียว
ตัวนี้จะกินจ่าเทียจงพยายามช่วยส่งสุดตัวก็ในขบวนตาลันเดียวเมกาตัวเอ็มเบสเดอร์เลยอย่าตัวเชื่อใจได้แค่เมกาโ